for decades, rice farmers would burn their fields to get rid of the stubble left over from harvest. But in the 90s, regulation changed that. So we turned to flooding the fields. Essentially, flooding the fields does the same thing. It decomposes the rice straw. But what nobody knew, what none of us predicted, was the wind for the birds. They'd fly over and they would recognize these flooded rice fields as wetlands. They really are using this land as surrogate wetland habitat, which is really important because there's not much natural wetland habitat left here. We've lost 90 to 95% of it. And rice now provides up to 60% more food and habitat for waterfowl in the winter. What we're learning now is that that same water on the floodplain has great benefits for fish. The infrastructure that we have today was designed and built for a purpose 100 years ago, without a lot of time spent on how it might impact fish. Irrigation is the principal purpose for which man has developed the Sacramento and San Joaquin rivers in the great Central Valley of California. If you look back 150 years ago before the gold rush, the salmon population was the most abundant king salmon population really in the world. We basically had free flowing rivers that came down into this large central valley that was a big floodplain. And when the people started showing up, we, we had to control the rivers because we were moving in. Our cities were next to the river. Our agriculture was next to the river. We've built a system that has made over 95% of these floodplain wetlands no longer accessible to the river and to the fish in the river. We now have a system where we store the water behind dams for good reason, right? We need it in the summer for irrigation. We need to protect our cities and towns from floods. But in doing so and in channelizing all of our rivers, we've changed the way the system works. And you see that reflected in the crashing numbers of fish. The salmon and trout populations in California are completely dependent on human management at this point. They're not going to make it without us giving them a boost and managing our water and our land resources. I look at that and I say, here's, here's real potential. Here's potential for, for small tweaks that result in revolutionary change. Traditionally, environmentalists and private landowners have been at odds with conservation and resource management issues. I think you had a lot of folks kind of fighting for positional arguments, and the drought really forced folks to say, hey, look, right or wrong, we all got to get together and get to work on fixing this. We needed a couple of partners to like take that leap with us, and uh, River Garden Farms who are willing to take a risk and, and try something different um, just to see if it worked. We really saw people that we'd never worked with before and started working together to really manage the water resources here in California. And it was through that cooperation that we started to move forward with projects that we feel are very viable and that can help the ecosystem. And without them, we'd be nowhere. We need somewhere to, to try stuff out. Everything needs to eat. You know, just like we do, just like the salmon do, the bugs need to eat too. The rice fields are a perfect place to grow them because there's a lot of leftover organic material that breaks down into little bits of nutrients that the bugs can eat. Today, we're actually working on uh, an exciting part of the project, which is draining these rice fields and tracking the the flow of the plankton in that water, uh, out with the water, back to the river. The first thing we do when we show up today is, is pull a board out of the rice box and let a bunch of water flow out of the field. And our job is to sample along that trajectory for, for water quality and for plankton density. Cool. Looks good. We're sampling for um, lower trophic level productivity, so that means basically small crustacean life, essentially. So we got a bunch of uh, large-bodied cladocerans. That's a good sign. That's like the prime rib of fish food. 
And then a bunch of small ones as well, which is another good sign. That means they're reproducing really well. They got a healthy population. They're good, good fish food, basically. Large body clodocerans. That's, that's what we're looking for. Check out this sample that uh, Jacob just pulled out of the field. Is this what it's been looking like lately? Mostly. Yeah, you know, almost every field. But this, we had three weeks where we didn't get much growth out of, out of this field here, and then it just exploded. The food's out here on the floodplain. We can grow that food here and get it back to the fish in the river. We can build a system that grows food for people in summer, but those same fields in winter can create habitat for ducks, for geese, for fish, create the raw productivity to make that system work. So. Now, this is really a, a model for the 21st century for resource management and for California. To make this work, it takes folks like River Garden, those that have the vision that do something that hasn't been done before, do it right, and really set a model for the future. We can use our resources, our water, our land, and re-time the, the way things have been to benefit the whole ecosystem. We can benefit birds, we can benefit fish, we can benefit all the critters that are out here by us remanaging uh, how we use our resources. These are win-win solutions. These are projects that work for farmers, that work for environmentalists, that work for folks to the south of the Delta and up here in the Sacramento Valley. That we are creating a new model, and that model is really all about understanding how nature works and integrating that knowledge into our management of it. The new way forward is really figuring out how to make every acre of land have multiple benefits. Make it work for people in growing food. Make it work for birds who need winter or summer habitat. Make it work for fish. We've got to figure out a way to have multiple benefits and to use the limited resources that we've got as smartly as possible. And that's both for wildlife and people. I think if we're gonna have fish rebound, it's projects like this. And that this is where we build the foundation of that knowledge that we ultimately drive policy with. We can continue fighting, you know, to the bitter end, but no one's really gonna win in that scenario. I don't see any, any losers when we do it this way. It's a win for the fish, it's a win for the birds, and it's a win for people. I don't know a single farmer who doesn't wanna see more ducks, more salmon. We have the capacity here in the Sacramento Valley to demonstrate a model that has real global importance, that shows that you don't have to choose either or, that you can create a landscape that works for people, that works for the environment, that creates food for people in summer, that creates food for ducks, for geese, for fish, for all of our native critters the year round. And that's something that I'm just proud to be part of.